Better this chair would be the one Tandi, for obvious reasons. Honorable Speaker, thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I rise to support the mediated, mediated version of the Division of Revenue Bill, which has been ably uh, uh, presented by my chairman, the, the, the Honorable Nidi Nyoro, Chairman Budget and Appropriations. Honorable Speaker, I was part of the mediation team that midwife this report, and together with the team that uh, represented the National Assembly, uh, led by the co-chair and Dindi, and also the chair, the other co-chair from the Senate, the Honorable Kaduri Murungi from Meru, Meru County. I want to say that, uh, that this, this is one of the best uh, uh, reports that this house is going to pass, and the amount of money which we have given to the counties has now passed the 300 uh, figures. So, Honorable Speaker, this is really a substantial amount which, if uh, well utilized by our counties, we are going to see development in the, in the counties. Honorable Speaker, as we uh, discuss uh, this medi mediated version of the Division of Revenue Bill, I want to say, Honorable Speaker, that the share of revenue to counties is not subject to uh, to supplementary, that even if the revenue focus is not achieved, the money allocated to counties is never changed. So therefore, it is very stable money, which uh, counties really have no excuse. Because whereas we are going to amend our, uh, we are going to uh, have supplementary budgets here in response to shortages of revenues, the money is going to counties does not change. Secondly, Honorable Speaker, is that there are some functions which have not been properly devolved. And this is something which this House needs to take very seriously. Even as we pass the budgets here, there are some budgets that are still being held by national government against the Constitution. So I think this is something which we need to really be serious about and ensure that all those functions which were constitutionally meant for counties, they need to be done by counties. Again, if this is done, Honorable Speaker, then we are not going to have this conflict when we are sharing revenues between national, vertically between national government and counties. Because the argument which has been advanced by governors and even the Senate is that there are so many uh, functions which we are still holding up here, which actually should go to the counties. Thirdly, Honorable Speaker, we are in, I think, in the 13th year of devolution. And Honorable Speaker, there are some counties that are still ashamed. If you go to some counties, Honorable Speaker, you wonder whether they have been receiving these billions of resources. And I think at this stage, let us also use this forum to caution counties and some governors that we are not going to see them misuse resources or lazing around and failing to implement development projects for the benefit of our people. Devolution was created so that our people in the grassroots are supposed to benefit and to grow. But Honorable Speaker, many governors are corrupt. Honorable Speaker, many governors are corrupt. They live large, you know, they are not implementing development projects. Honorable Speaker, if you go to some counties, I don't want to mention their names. Uh, nursery students, nursery children don't, don't even have, uh, you know, classrooms, ECD classrooms. They don't exist, you know. But governors are running around in convoys, big convoys, you know. Honorable Speaker, there's a governor who traveled to, uh, to a foreign country, or a convoy of more than 100 staff, Honorable Speaker. So this is something which we really don't, we need, we, need, we need to talk about, Honorable Speaker, even as we give them resources. We must ensure that there's a way in which we are going to check how they're using the resources. Honorable Speaker, I don't think senators are doing a good job in terms of oversighting counties. That is my personal view, because if they were doing a good job, then we, are, we would be able to see and ensure that these counties are performing the resources we give them. But senators are only interested in, uh, you know, backbiting National Assembly, you know, they want to do the roles that you're supposed to be doing here, oversighting national government, but they have left counties to, to die, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, as I conclude, let me say that uh, let the evolution work for our people. And if they cannot work for our people, we can discuss. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Nikal. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. Mr. Speaker. This is a basic issue, and I would implore the chair of the budget committee to listen to me. The fact that the committee noted the need of the counties, that is the basic issue. The basic issue here is not whether people support 
devolution or not. The basic issue is the process of the BPS. When we do the BPS, Mr. Speaker, we have tremendous amount of details from the national government telling us in great detail what the needs of the national government is, department by department, agency by agency. At that time, the National, uh, the national Assembly has no idea completely what the needs of the counties are. So to a large extent, the BPS is a document of the National Assembly. In fact, it's a document of the national government and not a document of the, count, of the country. So that when we come to the division of revenue, which is a direct product of the uh, budget policy,